I'm getting better at making setups. Let me show you. Hello everyone, my name is Roberto Grisiem, but you may call me Robbie for short. And today we will be giving the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star 7 some winning Pokemon teams. Since the cast is comprised of only winners, they will all be receiving a varied team of six. However, I will only be showing you three Pokemon from each of their teams because I gotta save some content for the other seasons I gotta cover. So make sure you subscribe for more fun Pokemon content and turn on notifications so you won't miss any of my new uploads. And without further ado, let's give our queen some Pokemon! Since I will only be showing you three Pokemon from each of the queen's teams, I'm going to focus on runways specifically from this season. You'll have to tune in to the videos of each winner's respective season to find out the rest of their team. We'll start with the winner of season 12, the essence of beauty, the essence of everything, the essence of being robbed, Miss Jada Essence Hall. She finished the competition with two wins, both in design challenges, and had runways that were to die for. Uh, so I tried my best to give her Pokemon that are popularly deemed as beautiful. I'll start by giving her a sauce buck, based on her What Lies Beneath runway. It would honestly be criminal not to assign her one after showing us four beautiful garments themed after the four seasons. I gave her an autumn form sauce buck since it's my favorite form and garment of the four. Next, I'm giving her a Primarina, based on her all glowed up runway. Because of course she has a Primarina. Her look is essentially Beggish Showgirl meets The Little Mermaid meets Neon Sign. In terms of battling, Primarina can also help resist Saucebuck's weakness to ice, while Saucebuck in turn can help resist Primarina's weakness to grass and electric. Her final Pokemon that I'll show you for today is Porygon Z, based on her Pleather Principle runway. I must say, I am obsessed with this choice. Her runway in, for this category is inspired by what Jada described as one of her favorite movies, The Matrix. Porygon Z's constant twitching makes for a great reference. There's a glitch in The Matrix. I didn't simply want to leave you with teams of only three Pokemon because at the end of the day, they're all winners. They should all have champion teams of sex. But I also don't want you to tune in to future videos knowing what's coming. So, given their legendary legend status, I thought it would be interesting to choose a legendary or mythical Pokemon that represents each queen. Since we're still talking about Jada Essence Hall, let's start with her. I think Jada's legendary Pokemon is Cresselia, based on her grand finale look for season 12. Cresselia is a representation of the moon, which floats in space while orbiting the planet. I like to think that its pink, ring-like wings resemble the ring of stars and celestial bodies surrounding Jada's look. Ultimately, I didn't want to limit myself to just runways from All-Star 7, because I think this choice works really well. Next, let's talk about the winner from the first season of Drag Race UK, God Save the Vivian. Her style of drag tends to be very classy, which is apparent even in her drag name sounding like a royal title. Since she is from the UK, I made sure that her team was available within the Galar Regional Pokedex. We'll start off by giving her a Persian, based on her Nitty Nitty Bang Bang runway. This runway category showcased looks made of yarn, so I decided upon a cat Pokemon since they're associated with yarn. At first, I thought of giving her a Berserker since it was introduced in Generation 8. I opted for Persian instead, as it's regarded as a symbol of wealth in the Pokemon world. Her second Pokemon is Nidoqueen, based on her look for the Knight of a Thousand Dolly Partons. If you've seen my previous videos from the series, You'll notice a tendency to give Southern Queens ground-type Pokémon. Viv isn't a Southern Queen, but Dolly Parton is, and her impression of Dolly was, in my opinion, the best of the bunch. Nido Queen's color scheme goes well with this look, and it's a nod to how the Vivian said she doesn't normally wear blue, even though half of her runways this season were some shade of blue. Her third Pokémon is Togekiss, based on her all-glowed-up runway. At first, I thought of giving her a Swanna for this runway because it perfectly matches the color scheme and wingspan, but it's not part of the Galar Pokédex, so I settled on Togekiss for its white color scheme and angelic design. Finally, the legendary Pokémon I chose for the Vivian is Calyrex, based on her look for the I'm Crowning category. I like to think that Calyrex's crown resembles the headpiece for this look. 
This is the only Galar introduced Pokemon on her team, and I thought it was a nice callback to the day of the races runway from her original, as Calyrex has two trusty steeds, either Glastrier or Spectrier, that it can ride to become as one. Our next winner fought her way to the crown her own way, the queen of the Queerdos, Evie Oddly. Evie had a great run this season, but it's a shame she received zero prize money for her impressive runways and great performances. However, I'm glad she showcased a softer side to her drag. It's always unique to watch. Her first Pokemon is Berserker, based on her Nitty Nitty Bang Bang runway. I mentioned in the Vivian segment that cats are associated with yarn, so I continued the idea here. I like to think that the threading needles in her hands resemble Berserker's claws. Berserker also has a more rugged personality than its regional counterparts, and tends to be misunderstood amongst the citizens of the Galar region, which I think represents Eevee really well. Her second Pokemon is Galvantula, based on her entrance look. Gavantula is based on a tarantula, an arachnid that is typically regarded as a creepy crawler. Arachnids are nimble yet flexible creatures, which is an appropriate descriptor for Eevee's ability to contort. Gavantula also lightly matches this look's color scheme. Her third Pokemon is Al Creamy, based on her grand finale eleganza runway. This was an obvious choice for a multi-layer cake-themed runway, as Al Creamy's Gigantamax form is a giant wedding-style cake. Finally, Eevee's legendary Pokemon, or mythical Pokemon in this case, is Marshadow, based on her successor crowning look for Season 12. She opted for a monochrome look for this outfit that blended with her surroundings, kind of like how Marshadow likes to hide among the shadows. Marshadow is also one of the most mischievous Pokemon in the series, playing pranks on humans and other Pokemon, which I like to think translates well with how Eevee includes dark humor into her drag. Next, it would be logical to continue with the final queen in the she done already done had herses bracket, but I'll save the winner of this group for the end. Instead, we'll talk about the last minute entry into the queen of all queens bracket, Shay Coulee. Shay loves to address her drag as a love letter to black women by including many influences to African culture. Africa obviously being a giant continent has very pronounced weather patterns that vary drastically depending on the region and the season. So I thought it would be cool to explore a weather team for her. Her first Pokemon is Ninetales, based on her grand finale Eleganza runway. This dress actually has nine different colors, which to me represent each of the tails on the nine-tailed fox. We have the darker green up top, the light mint green, the yellowish green, the orange on the second layer, the brighter yellow, the brownish yellow, the darker orange, the red at the bottom, and black. I promise I counted this a hundred times. The lighting from the photo might be deceiving me, Humor me for a moment. <laughs> Ninetales can have the ability Draught, which summons sunny weather upon being released from its Pokeball, thus the beginning of this weather team. Her next Pokemon is Heliolesk, based on her all glowed up runway. This outfit is technically meant to be a sunflower, but Sunflora kind of sucks as a competitive Pokemon, so I thought it would be more creative to interpret this as an electric type. Heliolisk can have the ability Solar Power, which increases special attack in harsh sunlight while taking away one eighth of its HP each turn. Her third Pokemon is Gardevoir, based on her look for the lip sync for your legacy performance from the first episode. Gardevoir is a very popular Pokemon, whose body resembles a flowing gown similar to the one Shay is wearing here. While Gardevoir doesn't benefit from the sunny weather, it serves as a support role to cover her team's weaknesses as it's notorious for having a wide range of moves to choose from. Among that range of moves is Sunny Day to help restore the team to its full power. Finally, Shay's mythical Pokemon is Shaman, based on her look for the I'm Crowning runway. This gorgeous gown is made of a colorful flower pattern that to me resembles the Gracidia flowers that grow on Shaman's back when it feels comfortable. Rather than being a trainer with a Shaman on her team, Shay here looks like the guardian of this mythical Pokemon. Her demeanor while wearing this dress is that of someone confident, a leader capable of helping this fragile creature to reach its full potential. Our next contestants won a season together and have now reached the finale together once more. Of these two winners, let's first discuss the queen eliminated from the first rounds of this lip sync smackdown, Trinity the Tuck. Her first Pokemon is Lightbird, based on her nitty nitty bang bang runway. I think everybody can agree that this choice was too obvious. It's a purple dress with animal print details that a fan made for her. 
Lightbird is also a smart choice for Trinity, because she showed us the animal print rope she's used during Untucked for all three of the seasons she's been a part of. Her second Pokemon is Crobat, based on her Spike's runway. This outfit was a very creative approach to the category, and it was inspired by the classic that is Dracula. Fun fact, I actually read the entire original book for AP English in high school and surprisingly enjoyed it. Nowadays, you won't catch me reading books for the life of me. It takes me too long to get through one chapter. But I chose Crobat because the original Dracula is described in the novel to be menacing and very fast. Crobat has one of the highest speed stats of any regular Pokemon, and it complements Lightbird really well. Her third Pokemon is Lilligant, based on her What Lies Beneath runway. I thought of giving Trinity a Rose Raid at first, but I felt that Lilligant was a better choice for this look. The flower on top of Lilligant's head better resembles the flowers on Trinity's sides. Plus, its Hisuian form sort of resembles how Trinity slowly revealed to another, more revealing look. Now, this is usually the section in which we talk about their legendary Pokemon, but before talking about Trinity's, we are going to talk about her Twinners team, Monet Exchange. Monet's first Pokemon is Altaria, based on her variety show performance, where she sang an opera piece. Altaria has a calm and graceful demeanor that complements Monet's style of miscongeniality. Its fluffy wings can be seen represented in the cloud-like smoke floating on the ground. But what really sold me on this choice was Altaria's Pokedex entries. In Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, the Pokedex reads, It looks like a fluffy cloud when it is in flight. It hums with its soprano voice. Which I think sounds like a perfect balance for Monet's voice range, for she is a bass. Her second and third Pokemon are Toxtricity and Kling Clang, based on her Spike's runway. This two-for-one choice is a first for this series that came to be after I did the same thing with Trinity and Tuck for her team. Remember how I said at the beginning of the video that I would only show three Pokemon from each Queen's team? Well, Trinity has a two-for-one choice on her team, based on a Season 9 runway. But we're only talking about All-Star 7 for now, so you best subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for new videos to keep this series going. Toxtricity represents that punk fashion that is part of Monet's drag style, while Kling Clang is the more literal representation of this look. Since they shared a win in All Stars 4, I wanted Monet's and Trinity's teams to complement each other while still having Pokemon that represented their own personalities. But I also did the same with their legendary Pokemon. Trinity's legendary Pokemon is Reshiram, based on her promo look for All Star 7, while Monet's is Zekrom based on her Boots the House Down runway from All Stars 4. Reshiram and Zekrom are part of the Tau trio of legendary Pokemon, with Kirim being the final of the three. They are based on the concept of yin and yang in Chinese philosophy, two forces that are opposite yet complementary. Trinity's Reshiram represents yin. She was a receptive friend in the competition, ready to help queens with their runways. However, she was willing to play a social game by making alliances to reach the end of the competition. Monet's Zekrom represents Yang. She was a more self-driven force, willing to do anything to win the competition. Yet she was congenial, unafraid to open up and be vulnerable with her fellow queens. There are more examples, like how Trinity tends to show a softer side of drag, while Monet has an edgier sense of fashion. Opposite, yet complementary. Next, we finally move on to the winners from each Lip Sync Smackdown. As the title holders from each bracket, I will show four Pokemon from their team. Let's start with the winner of the She Done Already Done Had Hers This title, the original Queen of Style, Raja. As the winner of Season 3, Raja has had the most time to polish her already veteran skills in drag. So I gave her a powerhouse team of Pokemon that also reflects her culture. Her first Pokemon is Claydol, based on her entrance look. This dress is a reference to her entrance look from Season 3, in which she wore a headpiece with a big eye in front. She also referenced the same look in her window promo at Saks Fifth Avenue in New York City. Clay Doll, with its many eyes around its head, is a fitting choice for Raja, as she is commonly associated with its third eye motif. The second Pokemon is Kamo'o, based on her performance in the variety show. This choice almost slipped my mind, but I'm glad I came up with it because it fits so well. Raja showcased a Bali dance that is part of her culture, and it reminded me of Kamo'o's special Z-move, Clangera's Soul Blaze. I mean, just look at the animation for this move. It's similar to the dance Raja was performing on stage, and you cannot convince me otherwise. 
Her next Pokemon is Volcarona, based on her grand finale Eleganza Runway. While the color scheme doesn't match, Volcarona is an excellent choice for this look, in my opinion. She described this runway as an alien bug-like creature, and that's more or less what Volcarona is. Competitively speaking, Volcarona's bug and fire type can help cover Kamo-O's weaknesses to Psychic and Fairy, as well as Clay Doll's weaknesses to Grass, Ice, Bug, and Dark. Then we have Raja's fourth team member for this video, Zamazenta, based on her all-glowed-up runway. This was her most expensive outfit coming into the competition, and it was delivered so well. I like to think that the silhouette of this look resembles the shield-like shape of Zamazenta's fur. I decided upon this choice as she is a winner among winners, sort of representing Zamazenta's two forms, the hero of many battles as she won season 3 over 10 years prior, and its crowned shield form as she is the winner of the consolation prize for this season. Finally, we have her mythical Pokémon, a choice that I'm sure most everyone will agree with. That Pokémon is Hoopa based on her nitty nitty bang bang runway. Raja's look parallels Hoopa's affinities for rings as she has golden discs all along her left arm. The horns that extend from the bridge of her nose kind of looks like Hoopa's own demon-like horns, and the gold ensemble even resembles Hoopa's shiny form. It's worth noting that Hoopa is inspired by different depictions of deities from Middle Eastern, Hindu, and Greek mythologies. It's for this reason that Hoopa complements Raja so well, as her Asian-American heritage largely influenced her Pokemon team. At last, we have our ultimate winner, the reason for the season, the queen of all queens, Jinx Monsoon. She is the queen to have performed the best throughout the season, so it made sense for her to be the one to win it all. Jinx prides herself on being a witchy character, so her team is pretty unanimous in the community. While I'm sure that you will agree on most of these choices, I also wanted to ensure she has a respectable team that covers her bases. Her first Pokemon is Delphox, based on her all glowed up runway. While I was preparing this video, I already had a few choices laid out, but as soon as I saw this runway, I immediately chose this. This look is based on the Salem Witch Trials, a historical event from 1692 in which people, mostly women, were accused and prosecuted for practicing witchcraft. The alleged witches were then burned at the stake for their crimes. This is also the inspiration for Delphox, as it is the first fire and psychic type non-legendary Pokemon introduced into the series. Her second Pokemon is Miss Machias, based on her look for the Draguation speeches. With Miss Machias, we continue the witch theme here, as Jinx is wearing a mage hat and robe in this look. She even made a joke about her graduating from a witch school in this performance. Miss Machias' only ability is Levitate, which can be useful to bait ground-type moves that Delphox is weak to. Her third Pokemon is Sandslash, based on her Spikes runway. A bit of an unconventional choice, I know. But hear me out. This look is based on a porcupine and was actually designed by Van de la Creme, who frequently works and goes on tour with Jinx. Sandslash isn't specifically based on a porcupine, but it borrows physical traits from one. Sandslash provides a bit of versatility to her team, being able to deal with rock types that threaten Delphox, as well as many common electric types. Then we have our final member for this video, Zashian based on her grand finale Eleganza runway. Just like Raja, I decided upon this choice as she is the winner of all the winners. Zashian's two forms sort of represent her two reigns, the hero of many battles representing her win on season 5, and its crown form representing her win on All Star 7. I like to think that as a witch, Jinx would surround herself with the magical creatures that are fairy types which is regarded as one of the most powerful types in the game. Zashian is one such example of a powerful fairy type, since it's obviously a legendary, but it's also a nice nod to the LARPing accident she mentioned on the show. Finally, her mythical Pokemon is Diancie, based on her successor crowning look for the grand finale of Season 6. Diancie is canonically born from a Carbink that undergoes a mutation, so I like to think that a Carbink that was part of her team went through this mutant process and turned into a Diancie. With both of these Pokémon being Rock and Fairy, we continue the theme of witchcraft, which occasionally incorporates the use of crystals and gemstones. It's also a nod to Jinx's role as Emerald in the Lars of the Stars episode from Season 5 of Steven Universe. This look mainly reminds me of Diancie's Mega Evolution, which transforms its dress-like appearance into a longer, more extravagant ensemble surrounded by crystals. 
This was very fun. I hope you enjoyed my interpretation of Leech Queen's Pokemon team and that you look forward to future videos like this. I encourage you to subscribe so you won't miss the videos for other seasons of Drag Race, as well as some regular Pokemon content coming your way. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment telling me what your favorite Pokemon team was. And as always, I appreciate you being here. Bye.